Uh, can you tell me, what is the heaviest individual component? When we look at this uh, inverter itself, we actually allow for 200% oversize on the PD side. Okay. And what that does is it allows us to... How would a homeowner typically configure the smart loads to get better runtime and performance out of the battery? Yeah. Tell us about how does X-Power work in a self-consumption type mode. So I'm curious, what type of information, um, what type of uh, parameters can the homeowner set here within the app? The smarter way to go solar. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And today we're coming to you from RE Plus, which is the International Solar Conference here in Anaheim, California. And this afternoon, I'm joined, uh, joined by Dennis Chang. Hey, Joe. Um, good to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and uh, Dennis is from Solax. We're looking at the new Solax X-Power solar and energy storage system. Yeah, thanks, Joe. So we're really excited about this product. Uh, we've been in the United States for a couple years now, but our Solax X-Power is meant for a modular assembly. We have multiple applications with just the one unit here that you see today. Our inverter is a 7.6 kW inverter with a BMS right here. And we can stack up to four, five kilowatt hour batteries for 20 kilowatt hours or 18 kilowatt hours usable. And we can actually parallel four stacks for over 30 kW of output and 72 kilowatt hours of battery usable. That's great, that's great. You know, I've, I've been seeing a number of the uh, solar and energy storage products now adopting this modular stackable design help make things a little bit easier on yes. the installer. Yes. Uh, can you tell me what is the heaviest individual component that make up the stack? The here? battery is the heaviest. It is the, obviously the densest equipment that we have on the wall. But unlike some of our competitors, uh, each one of these only weighs about 120 pounds. So actually, okay. if we were to do an install together, you and I wouldn't need special equipment. They have handles. We can actually pick them up and load them ourselves. So two-person install, no, no special lift equipment required. If you have a really strong guy in your team, he could probably do it by himself. <laughs> well, uh, I know one of the things that installers out there have been struggling with is just managing the logistics of these heavy batteries. You know, some of the batteries on the market now are 200, 300, some 400 pounds. Right. Where it's just not practical, for, even for one or two people to do it, unless you bring in specialized equipment, which means more complex logistics, more gear you have to load up on the truck. It just kind of complicates the install. Absolutely. I mean, if you, especially if you think about it, when you're at the job site, you don't necessarily have access to like pallet jacks, especially if you're at a homeowner. Obviously, no forklifts, right? So, right. how do you get this equipment off the truck? You know, we just have small boxes that you can uh, take off the box, uh, take off the truck, and then becomes a really easy move. Whereas a, a larger system that's three, 400 pounds, you're gonna need three to four guys to try to haul it off the pallet. That's not really the safest way to approach it. And so we thought about the installer first for ease of install, safety, and just the modularity for design practicality. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I've heard that from a number of the other manufacturers too, that, that taking feedback from the installer, really focusing on ease of installation, efficiency of installation, as important as some of the other capabilities. But, yes. um, but I know a lot of the audience is gonna to wanna to know about capabilities, so let's talk about it. You mentioned power output, it's, it's, it's 7.6 kilowatts? Yes, that's correct, 7.6 kW AC output. AC output, and then in terms of storage capacity, each battery module, remind me again, is, is it five kilowatt five hours? Five kilowatt per? hours, and then four and a half uh, usable. Four and a half usable, yes, so, so for a complete stack, if you do all four modules, like what we have pictured here, Yep, 20 kilowatt hours nameplate, 18 kilowatt hours usable. 18 kilowatt, okay. Yes, absolutely. And then um, when we look at this uh, inverter itself, we actually allow for 200% oversize on the PD side. And okay. what that does is it allows us to use about 11.4 kW of power between PV uh, generations so that we can actually power your home with 7.6 kW and have a couple kW left over to actually charge your batteries simultaneously. Excellent, excellent. All right, now let's talk about the, the interface here or the, the transfer switch. Uh, now, the configuration we're looking at, this is for whole house backup, correct? Correct, yep. Okay. This is what we call the Backup Interface Pro or the BI Pro. Okay. Uh, this whole box itself will actually back up a full 200 amp panel. Within the BI Pro, we actually have multiple smart loads that you can actually manage within our app. You can set up automation to say, hey, if my battery hits a certain state of charge, I want load one to shut off, as is exemplified right behind yeah, maybe, you. Maybe we can come over here and take a look at this, because this is one of the things we talk about often for you know, those that are looking for a true solar with whole house battery backup. Uh, having some kind of intelligent load control helps you get more out of your battery, 
That way you're not necessarily trying to power heavy draw, but low priority items, especially at nighttime when you're having to run all the off battery power, assuming grid power is not available. Correct. So Dennis, explain for me, how, how would a homeowner typically configure the smart loads to get better runtime and performance out of the battery? Yeah, so we would actually look at what is the largest consume, consumption loads within a home, right? So the first one that comes to mind is an AC unit. Uh, obviously we can put an 80 amp, that's the largest one uh, for a single load. We would assign the AC to that, to load one. And then from there, we would then look at maybe like the kitchen because you have an electric stove, you have a microwave. We would put that in another load. Um, maybe you have an EV charger that you want to be able to control uh, as well, then we can put that. But we have the flexibility because it's actually a, a breaker that we assign to each one of these loads that we shut off and turn on and turn off. There's flexibility for the installer and the homeowner to make the decision that best fits the homeowner's preference. Great. And is it is it sort of a, an on or off situation, or can these be programmed to trip off based on certain battery status? Like, let's say if the battery falls below 50%? Both. Okay. Yeah, so we can build the automations to say, hey, my battery's at 80%, let's shut off load one. It's at 50%. Uh, I want to make sure I conserve a little bit to get through the night, let's shut off load two. Um, so there's a little bit of automation there based on state of charge. But ultimately, we want to get the power to the homeowner they can manually go in and toggle on and off. Makes sense. Yes. Makes sense. Okay. Now, you know, as we're recording here, Dennis, we're in California right now, Southern California. They lost one for one net metering here in California last Correct. year. Uh, so a lot of folks that are going to be installing solar and batteries now are going to want to take advantage of that battery on a daily basis because they don't want to have to sell it to the power company at, at a discounted rate. So tell us about how does X-Power work in a self-consumption type mode? Yeah, so we'll just prioritize. Um, obviously, within the backup interface, uh, there's a CT built in with revenue grade meter. We can actually see the, the home consumption as it relates to PV and how much battery you have. And you can set it up so that you don't ever actually either export or uh, pull from the grid. So everything that you generate from the PV, you store and then you self-consume that. Makes sense. So it's essentially, it's a priority. We're looking at what's the home doing? What's the grid doing? How much PV do you have? How much of a state of charge do you have? And if we want to make it so it's self-consumption, then obviously the panel balance is the first priority for the system. So it'll make sure that all the PV and all the battery is offsetting whatever's happening in the main panel. Perfect, okay, okay. So, you know, for those of you who've been following the channel for a while, you know that one of the things I recommend for those of you who are looking for maximum redundancy is to have a system that gives you a generator hookup option as well. So if you are running in a grid down mode, let's say the weather's bad, the solar panels can't keep up with recharging the battery, you have another option, you can fire up the generator and recharge the batteries that way. Dennis, and is, that, also, is that correct? That's also, uh, we can also do pass through. So okay. we actually can help manage the operation of the generator. Uh, we are generator agnostic. It's just that there's a 100 amp uh, limitation on the input. Okay. But for most homeowners, that's 24 to 25 kW generator. That's more than enough for most average homes. So we're really happy with the sizing there. So if the battery is low and you don't have a lot of PV, but you'd still want to not consume from the grid, the generator can actually power and charge at the same time. Great, so you can take, let's say a 25 kW generator, if the house only needs 10 K, the remaining balance could be used to, to recharge the battery. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and that's important too, because that way you're not running the generator all day. You're running the generator just long enough to recharge your batteries, and then maybe you can run through the night off the battery, not have to have the noise and not be burning fuel all night. Correct. And, and our whole premise is having, giving the power back to the homeowner, right, to make themselves energy independent. They're in control of what actually goes on in their own home. Yep, that's the idea. Yes. All right, now I noticed you have a display here with, I guess, what is the app? So I'm curious, what type of information well, um, what type of uh, parameters can the homeowner set here within the app? Yeah, so this is uh, this is what we call the Solax Cloud. It's available on all the app stores for your mobile devices. And this is actually what the homeowner would use to monitor what's going on with the system. Uh, because our system does not have any screens, this is the only way that you can get the information about what your system's actually doing. Um, at the core of it, you're looking at what your home load is, how much solar you're generating, what your battery capacity is from a percentage, you see that 87%. Right. Uh, how much power it's actually pulling in from the grid right now for charging. Um, this is a demo lab that we have live, which is why there's zero consumption because it's actually in Asia. 
uh, right now since it's the middle of the night. So that's why there's no solar and there's nothing going on in the lab, which is why it's charging from the grid. So going back to the functionality, the battery is pretty flexible, right? You can charge from the grid, you can charge from generator, you can charge your PV. So there's a lot of different ways to configure the system. Um, and when you actually add the generator and it turns on, the app actually turns on and adds another load. Obviously, we can demonstrate that down the road when we turn that on, but okay. you'll, you'll actually have another field pop up to figure out where that energy is going. These apps are dynamic, so you can actually see where the electrons are flowing based upon how the, uh, the, the diagram is moving. Make, makes sense, makes sense. Yep. And of course, you know, we're, we're, here, we're here at a trade show, guys, right? This is not a live system, this is not a real house, but we want to demonstrate the functionality so you get an idea of what, what capabilities will be available to you if you choose to install this system in your home. So you can see exactly how energy is flowing into and out of the home, how much is coming in from solar, how much is going to the load, the battery, the grid, and so Correct. forth. Correct. Yep, and we have CTs built into our backup interface, Pro. We have CTs in our, um, in our inverters as well. We also sell CTs that integrate into our system. So you have multiple points to monitor the, the current of how your electrons are flowing throughout the house. And all of that is, gets monitored in our app. Excellent, excellent. So folks, this has been a brief introduction to the new Solax X-Power solar and energy storage system. Again, you've got your solar inverter, you've got your battery storage, you've got intelligent load control for your heaviest loads, uh, as well as generator support and the ability to interface everything on the app. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Uh, and also go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this, you know, we're covering all the new products for this year. We want to make sure that that comes up on your feed so that you can stay up to date with us and keep up with everything. Uh, but uh, Dennis, is there anything else that the audience should know about the Solax and the X-Power ESS? No, if you guys have any questions, obviously visit our website, us.solaxpower.com, and we'll be happy to help you guys out. Great. Well, that does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.